Women's Arms in Winchester. You may ask, what are we doing in Winchester? What are we doing in Winchester, Sarah? So, actually, I thought it was Tony, but it's Sarah. Sarah's suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Bless her. What are we doing in Winchester? Well, we've been down here today doing a little piece on Jane Austen, and we're preparing for the uh, gala night next Friday, Alan. And where's that? It's new screen cinema in Winchester, isn't it? That is absolutely correct. A converted uh, building which they're making into this fantastic two-screen cinema, which uh, is going to house some terribly glamorous people next week. Somebody said Emma Thompson's coming and... Me, you. And, me, yeah. and Greg You're Wise, <laughs> this heartthrob. That's the man on horseback. He's it's rather gorgeous in the film. <laughs> You'll see him coming up later in the show. We've got a few clips coming up. So we're going to be doing that this week. Where else, what else have we been doing this week? Oh, we went skiing, didn't we, in Austria? Well, some of them did. I just watched. It was, <laughs> I got scared. <laughs> actually, it was cheating. It was done at Christchurch Ski School, wasn't mm, it? Tobogganing and everything. They were brilliant, actually, the guys who did it. That was really good. And um, what's coming up next on the show? Oh, I know, the Test Valley Rock School. So we're going to look at that right now. Didn't know you could play the guitar. Anything else. Okay, take care. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Well, hiya. We're in... Uh, Problems Music Shop to speak to Rob Robinson, who's uh, one of our prominent guitarists and teachers in Andover. And Rob, we got this through for the Test Valley Rock School. Can you tell us something about this? Yeah, um, we've decided to organise an event where we can have uh, all the music players, all the young music players in Andover, guitarists, keyboard players, bass players, drummers, vocalists, get them together, give them a bit of tuition, put them into some sort of uh, band context and get them to play um, and finally on the Saturday night of the event we're going to do a gig for all their parents, anybody who wants to come along at the Haraway School where the whole event is taking place. Well what's the age group that these people will be? 11 to 16 year olds, right. secondary school age um, we sent things out to Haraway School, Winton School, John Hanson School, Clear School Testbourne, Test Valley, all around the all around the area. Um, uh, do there have to be musicians already? Or you're gonna, you can't teach somebody from scratch, I suppose, in two days. Then. Well, it's going to be it's going to be hard. Um, we've had a few applicants who said they're total beginners. Um, we're going to see how many of those we get, and then we might sort of set a, a time aside for them to give them some basic tuition. You know, just get them started, and you know, maybe see them at the next Test Valley Rock School. Yeah. Uh, and, See if they've improved and uh, well, put them in the band. This is, I think this is a wonderful thing. It's over two days. Yeah, 23rd and 24th of February, yeah. which is the uh, Friday and Saturday in the half-term holiday, which is coming up in about two weeks' time. Right. So uh, the parents can get rid of the kids for two days as well. Now, you say you're going to put them in a, in a band. If they're not a band already. You will just put guitars, bass players and drummers together. Yeah. Um, we've, we've had some whole, complete bands, you know, come forward. And uh, what, we, what we think would be good is if we split them up, put them in different bands mm. so they can uh, you know, learn about working with a new drummer or a you know, new guitar player, maybe do some songs that they're not used to doing mm. yeah. um, and see how, see how they get on with it. It's just going to be very interesting. Yeah, there is a prize at the end of the, of the course. Yeah. Um, probably to the players that are you know, sort of intermediate, maybe already in bands already, yeah. see how much improvement they can make over the two days. Um, and some of the prizes look quite uh, well, you know, worth winning. Yeah, and well, we've got a, a studio as well. Yeah, yeah, studio, uh, Trident Studio. Trident in Studio, yeah. Woking, so. Good friends of ours now. When you get these bands together, will yeah. you be looking at them throughout the year or just after the two days, let them get on, get on with it? Well, um, I mean, obviously, we'd like if, uh, if it's the start of a, a whole new band, yeah. uh, we'd like to follow their progress, you know, that'd be, that'd be good. I'm sure there's going to be some form of follow-up event, maybe another school, maybe uh, more, than, uh, more than two days next time. It depends, uh, depends on the response um, and how these two days go. Right, now, how, how many people will be teaching these kids? Um, we've got, or oh, teachers, we have at the moment about 12, 13 teachers. Um, the, the players will be split up into probably about seven bands and each band will have a sort of a, a band leader so right. there's yeah. we've got seven teachers to do that um, they have various members of local groups and uh, people from uh, far, far of, farther afield mm -hmm. um, and then we've got a few special sort of guests coming to do you know various workshops on yeah. you know slap bass or two-handed tapping on the guitar or you know little special things so uh, we're still getting phone calls about people who heard about the event who 
sort of offer their services as well. So uh, this sounds great. Yeah. Uh, you're teaching. You're probably got more students than anybody else. You're teaching music. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how many students do you actually have? Um, on a on a one to one basis, probably uh, twenty five to thirty, um, and then at the, the various schools where I teach in sort of groups, probably probably another. 50, 60 students, possibly. Um, <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. How's the band going, SAD? SAD, yeah, very well. We've um, we brought the CD out in uh, December. Uh, s selling locally, in the, in the local hour price in Andover, Salisbury, Basingstoke, selling really well. We've sold um, in the hundreds. Excellent. So uh, we're pleased about that. Um, Gig-wise, we've, we've been taking a bit of a break. You know, we had a, a really tough year last year. We had a lot of success. We're really pleased. Um, and we thought, well, you know, take a little break, see how the CD does, send it off to every record company under the sun. Um, we've had some, you know, a few letters saying, well, well, it's not really us, and we've had some letters saying that uh, they'd like to see more of the band. So uh, we're letting the CD do a bit of the work at the moment. Right. Um, but we've got gigs coming up. Oxford, we're trying to get into a new area of Oxford, lots of gigs, yeah. lots of students. Um, which make, makes for a good gig. Yeah. Uh, cheap beer helps, but uh, <laughs> yeah. kind of everything. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're pleased. Um, starting to write some more songs at the moment as well, so possibly looking forward to doing some more recording at the end of this year, though. Uh, that's expensive, so maybe I have to speak to Trident. Yes, well, that's the one. We'll have a chat with them. Well, well thanks, thanks for much. talking to us yeah, today. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And uh, we, we have the cameras up there to see what goes on these yeah. day. If, uh, if anybody's interested in applying, you can get application forms from Probin's Music, yeah. uh, from all the schools I mentioned have been sent press packs, um, from myself. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we can get everybody there, the more the better. Mm. Um, Especially if you're keyboard players, we're a bit low on keyboard players at the moment. We've got yeah, keyboard players, we want lots them. Of bass players, but uh, keyboard players, we'd love to have some of those. We've got a, a keyboard player from Manchester coming down who works at the uh, Manchester University, there, the Salford School of Music, yeah. um, coming down, and she's got you know tiers of keyboards all midded up, um, waiting to go. So, excellent. A few of those would be excellent. Thanks, Rob. Been a pleasure. the top of one of the slopes of the Christchurch Ski and Leisure Centre. Very hard to say that. And I'm joined by Bill Smith. Now, Bill and Barry, what a lovely little teamwork. <laughs> Bill and Barry run this place, and apparently they own the land, and it could only be used for recreational purposes. And you said your partner, Barry, came up with this incredible idea in 1989. Well, yes, he did. We weren't even actually a skiing family at the time, but having one permission from the local authority to be able to put it here, we joined forces with two people that were skiers, and uh, between us all, we managed to build this centre. It's one of the most prestigious centres in the country, with all the off-piste facilities that we're able to offer. It's the widest, and uh, in the last few years, I managed to also introduce a little ski bob uh, called a Snegger Cat, because it's a Russian ski bob, and we found it was the most ideal medium to go down because it was very robust and stable, and that's what you need for children going on the slopes and you just get on it and go and that's been a great asset to us. Now of course we also uh, do a lot of snowboarding which has become very popular. It's quite so, dangerous snowboarding isn't it? Uh, well yes it can be, they, they learn very much quicker on it but of course you can't spread your legs because it's two feet on the one board which makes it a little bit more difficult <laughs> but uh, they're, they're basically into what they call aerials which means they like to uh, get off the ground and really do some exotic twists and turns and I'm hoping you might be able to see a bit of that today. As long as you're not asking us to do it Bill. Yeah. <laughs> what well, well, I'm impressed with it, you go to all these complexes, you can ski, you can let your kids have a run around, they can ski as well, go on the bobsleigh, you can have a cup of coffee, I mean it's not just part of the ski slopes, you've got everything here, you've got uh, restaurants, you've got the pizza place, you've got all sorts. That's right, uh, it's become very much a family type of unit and you don't come here just for an hour skiing, you come here for half a day and really uh, enjoy yourselves, you can either just see the scene or take part in it and you've got a nice ambience when you look around, you're quite in the middle of uh, forest areas and we've got an artificial lake so it all looks quite attractive. Because you've got a wide spectrum, you've got adults, small kids, all sorts yes, here. Yes, go right across the spectrum now, which is uh, ideal for us because it makes it more of an all-year-round enterprise, <coughs> whereas skiing is a very short season. Mm. But the kids uh, come here in the summertime and school holidays in August. Uh, we're busy 
uh, as busy then as we are in the middle of the winter. Do you have instructors who work here and help to teach yes. people who've never done it before? Oh yes, yes, we teach uh, skiing right from the very beginning to the very advanced. Is that, on, is that on class level or do you have individual tuition? It's on both actually, yes. We have classes up to 12 people or you can have uh, on a one-to-one -one tuition, you can have a very intensive course where you're here all day and just stop for a break and, and go out again. So you can really get to a controlled snowplow turn in one day and that's fine for your holidays. And have you become a hardened skier? Me <laughs> Uh, strangely enough, no. You're kidding me! All these no, years no. and he can't ski! <laughs> no, I want no, you on no. these slopes today, Bill. We've got to do it. My granddaughter's <laughs> very good at it, though. Mm. What's brilliant about the place, the average guy, will sort of, when he wants to go skiing, would say, oh, it's going to cost me a fortune to go to, to the Alps or whatever. But you can come here and learn the basics, and that's basically what it's designed for, isn't it? This is it, yes, very much so, because uh, instead of wasting time on holiday money abroad before you can actually go on the slopes, you get the basics here and you can go on the slopes immediately you get abroad. You can do a controlled snow plow turn, that's all that matters. Let's make it perfectly clear, it is a dangerous sport and if you're not trying to get the proper tuition, you can have a nasty accident. Time off work, it all costs money. And... Oh, oh yes, very much so. I mean, we, we would always recommend people to come to a slope like this uh, to get the basics and uh, make themselves much safer. Uh, birthday parties have become exceedingly popular. The children go out on the ski bobs for an hour. They don't need any experience. They wear themselves out. They come in, the tables are already laid up for them and they thoroughly enjoy themselves. We take the strain off the parents I and think, that's uh, worked well. I like, the wor I like the word wear them out because I think I'll bring my kids down. Yes. Because oh, <laughs> I think that's what yeah, they need. See, absolutely, yes. Something like this, yes. is, I think it's brilliant. Mm. It's in the middle of sort of like in the countryside and you know, you feel as if you are actually in Austria. Exactly. <laughs> That's what the mayor said when he opened it. Yes. Fantastic. He'd come back from Ireland, which is one of our twin areas abroad, and he felt he was back in Bavaria when he first opened it in September '89. So uh, was it, he was so very pleased. The credit to you and the sons, and you know, putting on a uh, wonderful. Yes, we felt we had achieved something when we finally finished it. Did uh, you have a big say in the design of the actual complex yourself, Bill? A big say in it. Uh, yes, you said we there's did. a model inside. And oh the... yes, yes, yes. Uh, I built a model which covered all the area including our neighbours to show how it would fit into the environment and we had a lot of say into it. It was very much a family affair with our other partners as well. And it's quite easy to get to in it. It's just off the, the road to Bournemouth, the main road. It's quite easy to get to. Oh yes, the A338 main spur road which runs uh, between uh, us and Bournemouth is very easy to get from. It only takes you about 10 minutes from that road. And so we're uh, in the commuter belt from London very easily. Okay, so what do you recommend for us today? I'm a complete beginner. Roger's an absolute expert. <laughs> come here and go on one of our taster lessons uh, where they'll stand on the top ridge at the bottom there and they just literally slide down with one of our instructors uh, showing them exactly what to do, how to walk around on these six foot planks, uh, how to put them on, take them off and then gradually get the feel of it and when you've had a, a taster lesson for an hour you can decide whether to come for our course of lessons or not. Thanks yeah. very much Bill for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Roger and Sarah were talking to Bill, uh, I went behind the scenes to see what I could get them to do. We found some wonderful ski bobs for them to go skiing on. So follow me and uh, we've also met a a ski instructor called Nathan. Now all the ladies at home will like Nathan because he looks like your typical ski instructor. So um, here he is and this is the ski bobbing. So I'm going to hand the mic to Sarah and uh, she's going to actually uh, tell us what's going on. So here we are Sarah. What do you think of these two? I think they're very very brave. Oh you look so sweet. Number 43 and number 24 ready to race. Who's going to win? Now we've been told this surface is very abrasive, it's actually... Well, oh, let's go and talk to Nathan. <laughs> Hello Nathan. Hi there. What were you telling me about the surface just now? It's more abrasive than... AstroTurf. AstroTurf. <laughs> what do they use AstroTurf for then, Nathan? Uh, playing football and sports and things like this. Oh, it's I see. Stendex, and it's uh, a little more slippy, but it's harder wearing. So you get some very nasty burns if you come off. Yeah, okay. okay, Nathan, just uh, there's a few little tips you want to give us about the, the bob. Yep, before you go down, make sure that you wrap the rope around your hand, okay, to stop it trailing on the ground and getting caught under the runners. Keep both feet on the bob at all times, don't put them down to try and stop you. Both hands on the steering wheel and try and steer in as straight a line as possible, okay? No jumping over the jumps and no trying to knock each other off. I think, I think, I think that's a safe bet.
Where did you get that hat? Where did you get that hat? Oi! Well, I got it in there, and there's a lovely ski shop in there, so maybe we bring Nathan in and tell you all about the ski and hire shop. Oh, and he's standing right beside us. What a coincidence. <laughs> Hello, Nathan. We're Hello. back again. Tell us a little bit about the ski shop in the centre. Uh, it sells an extensive range of skis and boots, and you can also hire skis and boots there, and, and all the other clothing, software, and hardware that goes with skiing. So you can look good on the slopes here, and then you can take it abroad to your holiday in Austria as well. Yeah. And apparently you service the, all the equipment yeah, that you use. Yeah, we've got a workshop here. in there with some high-tech machinery and... We use that to service the, sh service the skis, keep them nice and polished and waxed up and keep the edges sharp for when people go on holiday. When they go on holiday? Yeah. What, down this slope? Uh, not generally, <laughs> no. When they're going away to France and places like that, out right. to the Alps on snow. Lovely. So we're all well equipped and the boys and girls are on their sleighs or whatever you like to call them and they're ready to go. Thanks, Nathan. Well, we've got a ski bobbing party here. Lots of little pink hats everywhere. It's really sweet. And apparently it's Fiona's birthday. Where's Fiona? Fiona, come over here, darling. Is this what you've... Have you done this on your birthday before? Yeah. Have you? How old are you today? Nine. Happy birthday to you. So are there nine of you? No? How many are there? And what are you going to do today? We're going to do some ski bobbing. So how long do you do that for? An hour? Yeah. And how good are you? I'm quite good. So we're going to watch you and you're going to win the race, are you? Yeah. Happy birthday. We're going to come to the starting line and we're going to watch you. Good luck. Put it there. Okay. <laughs> May the best girl win. Here are the foot results for the 10th of February. In the Beza Homes League, Cambridge 1, Salisbury 3, good away win there for Salisbury. In the Juice and Wessex League, Andover 5, Brockenhurst 0, plenty of goals up at the Portway Stadium there. Whitchurch 3, Petersfield 1, good home win there for John Mass. In the Club Saver Hampshire Division 1, New Street 1, Pirelli General 0, good home win there for New Street, goal scorer John Smith. The league standings, in the Beza Homes League, Salisbury are currently 13th. They've played 23 games, we've got 30 points. In the Juice and Wessex League, Andover are 7th. They've played 28 games, I've got 45 points. Bemerton are 9th. They've got 25. They've played 25, got 40 points. Whitchurch are 14th. They've played 24 games, we've got 31 points. In the Club Saver Hampshire Division One, New Street are second. They've played 20 games, got 43 points. Romsey are seventh. They've played 19 games and I've got 37 points. That includes all the results for this week and I'll see you next week. Bye bye for now. I'm Femi MacDonald and this is Care in the Community. Today we're here in Salisbury at SIDS and to talk to us about SIDS we have with us Peter Creed and Debbie Thick. Um, tell us, either of you, what exactly is SIDS? What or who is SIDS? Well SIDS stands for Salisbury Information Around Disability 
Um, basically, we're an information centre. We're managed by a company called Community Care User Involvement Network, which is a company run by and for people with disabilities, sensory loss, mental health, anything at all. How exactly do you help disabled people in the community? Well, basically we help each other. Um, we work on the basis of supporting one another. Um, primarily we're an information centre and we supply information amongst one another and to all sorts of different organisations and get involved in access problems, work problems. We more or less cover any issue at all um, around the disability issues. Debbie, how long have you been involved and what exactly do you do here? Uh, since March 94 and I volunteer and just enable people. Um, I've spent quite a, quite a bit of time here and the atmosphere, I must say, is absolutely fantastic. You all support each other. I mean, how do you create this atmosphere and how do you, how do you keep it going? Well, uh, it's just that um, there is a positive side to disability. You know, people are fed up with hearing about the negative sides and how, how miserable it can be. I mean, it can be, but there is a positive side to disability. And if, if you're given the right support and encouragement, which we all do, you're quite capable of controlling your own life and taking control of your own life, and this is basically how we work. So how long has SIDS been going? Uh, since March 94 here, but Peter was working from home beforehand. And is there anything like this at all in any other part of the country? No, only, only the... Um, you get support groups and information centres, but um, a place like this where it's actually controlled by the users of the services themselves and uh, our local management group is 51% user controlled so any decision that's made is made by us as a group. What can the local community in Salisbury do to help you? Well you know basic, basically it's feedback I mean as I said we're, we're an equal opportunities company anyway and um, we get involved with um, most people in the community. After all, we are part of the community. I know people tend to forget that sometimes, but disabled people are part of the community. Um, we, we supply, as I say, all sorts of information and we get some good feedback from people, thank you letters saying, you know, glad you were here and I don't know what we did before you came. So it's all looking rather positive and great. You know, I just, I just hope we are funded by the um, Social Services and Health Commission and a little bit from joint finance, you know, and I hope they can continue to do so. The general public are in, a, in and out of here all the time for information and they like to come in and they end up sitting down having a cup of coffee and a biscuit and, and a lot of them that come in actually end up as volunteers, you know, they think, you know, could we give you some time? The number of people that are entitled to benefits and they don't even realise they're there, um, so we fill a hole there where we make sure, or try to make sure that people get just what they're entitled to. And yeah, it works very well, I'm very pleased. So what would you say to anybody who sat at home watching who would either like to become involved as a volunteer or who is disabled and would like to become involved themselves? Uh, they could either come down and see us when we're open or ring Salisbury 416189. 416189. 189. <laughs> yeah. Make a logo out of that. 416. 189. <laughs> well, they can just drop in. What times are you open? We're open from 9 till 5 and on a, most days, but on a Tuesday and a Thursday is 9 till 6. And we're open all day Saturday as well. So ba we're basically, we're here most of the time. We're closed on Wednesday. So. This is Phil. Phil, you actually work here, don't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. I come in and support and use a service for three days a week. Three days a week? Yeah. Um, and how do you help out here? What do you, what do you help out with? Well, um, it's just giving information to different people that come through the door and I'm talking and, and supporting other people. Most information comes by um, talking to other people when you're um, sat around or that's when most useful information um, can be given out or taken in or anything. Okay. 
Well, I'm quite interested in this picture that's going on over here as well. I'm going to have a quick look round here and talk to you. You're Bill, aren't you? Mm. And let me tell me about this picture. How long have you been working on it? Um, well, off and on uh, for about six weeks, but uh, that's only because I'm only here two mornings a week, and I teach anyone who is disabled who wants to draw or paint or pastel. So uh, we've had some people here this morning, they've gone now. Um, and Tuesdays and Thursday mornings anyone can come along and uh, join us. Some people um, have difficulty holding pastels, so we use soft pastels and then we more or less do abstracts or blend colours rather than more precise work like this. Depends on people's disability really. Great. Okay, well thank you for, for talking to us about that. Sure. We're going to have a, a look around here. I can see somebody with a twinkle in his eye here behind me. <laughs> twinkle in your eye, certainly have. What's your name? Dennis Rodenite. <laughs> and yours? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Famey. So how long have you been coming here? Um, for about three or four months now, I think. Yep. And what do you get out of this, this place? I mean, does it provide... Well, I help to ass I assist here, like other members of staff. So tell me about this, the spirit here. I mean, the people and the, the feeling that you get from um, coming here. I think it's excellent because it's, it, people can relax here. And uh, they're made welcome. That's the important thing. And... Um, People come in for information, but they also like to discuss it and find out uh, how it benefits them and their needs. So that's what we do, basically. What's your name? Gary. Gary. Gary and Demendez Harris, my full surname. And how long have you been coming here? Ooh, about eight or nine months. Um, the reason I'm in here and I'm writing this is not because I won the lottery and I thought I'd be lazy, but because I got multiple sclerosis and therefore I get very tired by walking a short distance. So how has, how has SIDS helped you? Well, it's given me confidence because it's shown me people like Phil, for example, who are in a worse state than I am. I mean, uh, in my opinion, I mean, I can still get out of this and I can still move from here to the door. I don't think Phil could even with crutches, so therefore, comparatively, I'm not as badly off as he is. And he still talks to me and we still get passing information backwards and forwards which is useful and meaningful. I mean there is a misconception isn't there that when you see somebody in a wheelchair mm -hmm. that they're not intelligent or... Oh yeah, but people think oh no they're sitting down so therefore their legs don't work so what can possibly happen above their neck? That's how it strikes me sometimes. So what would you say to people who are sat at home and who maybe want to come down here and, and join in? well do and if there's something you, you want or you need from coming here then please ask but be be gentle and understand that there's every chance that you will be helped but there's equally a chance that we won't be able to help you right away but you're going to do all you can to help people who come in i certainly would yeah okay thank you very much <laughs> it comes squash in the middle here so you're making friendship bracelets yeah and who, who are you making them for exactly down here People down here? Well, me and Michelle. Talk. Michelle. Sorry, Michelle and? <laughs> Mary. Michelle and Mary. So we've got Bill and Phil, Michelle and Mary. I get very confused very easily. Hi. So you're making them for everybody down here? Well, we're making them for the friends to sell and that. And I taught Michelle how to make them and she's done some. She's done more than what I have now. <laughs> and me and Mary, we help down the centre as well. And I sort of answer the phone and see the people who come in, they want, want, want benefits, inquiries, anything. I'm here as a volunteer. I've been here nearly 10 months at the end of this month, so yeah. And, and what, would you, what, what would you say to people who want to um, um, sit at home and maybe a bit daunted by the prospect of coming down? Not that they would be, because they're I, lovely I tell them sort of not to worry about it. If they want to come in, fine. Pop along, have a chat, have a cup of tea. I think of people, they come to a place like this and they think, oh, you know, I've got to go in the door and all this. But it's not as hard as it looks. I mean, people look in the window and they think, I oh, know, I'm not going to go in. But once they come in, they'll be back again and again. OK, so we've been inside. We've met a few people. We've had a wonderful time. Thank you to everybody at SIDS for having us. We've had beautiful cups of tea, biscuits. We've met lots of people. If you want to come down to SIDS, they're here in the Maltings in Salisbury. Um, scaffolding isn't normally here, so it might not be here when you come down. Um, so... If you're interested in anything we've said today, if you're interested in helping as a volunteer, if you're disabled and you want to come down and have some support and help, then do pop along.
Good morning, it's Town TV. Uh, it's Simon about, please. Good morning, I just get Thank you. Simon, I've got Tony from Town TV for you. Right, I've tracked Simon down. Not that he's drinking, but we happen to be in the bar. He's working here. How are you, Simon? Fine, thanks. Simon, how long have you been here in Andover now? Oh, we came uh, in July 94, uh, so it's been uh, a year and three quarters, really. Have, have you done many changes to the hotel since you got here? I mean, an awful lot. Last time you were here, we had changed the downstairs. We had created the wine bar. We had uh, done the front lounge and so on. And just more recently, we've just converted a very large manager's flat into three superior bedrooms. I had a quick look at them, and they are really good bedrooms, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, we've, got, we've got one four-poster room, yeah. uh, and then two other superior bedrooms, which are, you know, they really are four-star standard. Yeah. How is the restaurant doing? Uh, restaurant's doing fine. We don't get that much outside trade in the restaurant. In the wine bar, you know, we do, we do a lot of food, lunch yeah. times and in the evening. Uh, and so, you know, that the food s side of the business is going well, mm. uh, but it is more on the wine bar side. Uh, we do hope to uh, try and make the restaurant larger by buying some adjacent premises, but, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see and see what happens. Oh, you're, try you're trying to expand sideways as We're well? We're trying to expand sideways as well. <laughs> now, you're going to build some more bedrooms as well, aren't you? We are, yeah. We've, uh, we're just having some plans drawn up at the moment, and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have four more bedrooms, and we're going to have a mini gym. Uh, really? for, uh, for guest use and uh, plans are being done at the moment as I say so we're probably looking at uh, two or three months until we can get our permissions and uh, building work will be underway I hope. How long have you been in the business? Like <laughs> since I was five I think. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> uh, you know, growing up in, the father's, in my father's hotels and so on and then went out on my own when I was 21 uh, with a wine bar down in Portsmouth Mm -hmm. uh, then progressed and we got a wine bar in Southampton. That's a very busy place I believe, isn't it? It is. So I mean Simon's in Southampton is uh, you know, extremely busy, yeah. uh, not only at lunch times but in the evening. Uh, I mean Thursday, Friday and Saturday is uh, I mean, too busy really if you can have such a thing. Uh, we're also just uh, about six months ago, six or seven months ago, we uh, formed a new restaurant down in Southampton uh, called Mustang Sally's which is in Carlton Place. And, uh, what sort of a restaurant is it? Is it a theme restaurant? Or yeah, it's, right? it's, uh, it's an American burger steak bar type restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been doing extremely well. It's only small. We've got 54 covers mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, it's full up most evenings mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a lot of the lunch time. So that's doing well. And then we're just looking at, uh, at a venture up, uh, up near London. And uh, you know we're just really waiting to sign some contracts on so that. You're expanding all the time. Uh, all the time, yeah. I mean, there's uh, always things out there to do. You've just got to find the right opportunities. Simon, the last time we had the cameras down here, it was uh, the opening of Simon's Wine Bar, and we had Robin Smith. You see much of him these days? Oh yeah, that was uh, oh just over a year ago now, and Robin came out for that. He's been up a couple of times since, and uh, we're actually doing his because uh, this is benefit year this year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know he's just had a, he's just started he's had his uh, launch at the Hilton in Southampton and uh, he had his uh, his main London do which was at the Grosvenor House uh, that was uh, last week and uh, we've got him here for uh, his Andover benefit which is in uh, the middle of March mm. and uh, so you know that that should be a good lunchtime do it'd be great we had uh, Robin on the show when he played at Napa Show in, in the charity match he's a terrific fellow we got on extremely well yeah I mean both Robin and his brother Chris yeah. Uh, you know, who I, I know both of them, and you know, they're both nice guys. Uh, you know, Chris now has is, is gone abroad to uh, find fortune and fame abroad, but you know, Robin is still in this country and still doing well for England at He's the moment. He's doing very well, isn't he? He is. I see, believe he had actual acupuncture to get himself right this time, or some reading somewhere in the pavement. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, it was. You've got a big function room here. How many people can you seat at one, one time? Uh, the Oak Room seats up to 70 people. Uh, as I said, one of the uh, plans that we, that we have is to, you know, if we can, if we can get a property that's, uh, you know, adjacent, we can, uh, you know, hopefully expand on that. Mm. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, as I said, we're just trying to uh, put out a few feelers now to see what happens there. So you're going to make it even a bigger function room? I mean, ideally we would like a function room for a hundred people. Really? Yeah. And, uh, you know, as I said, we just have to wait and see what happens. Does it get used for meetings and things as well? I Conferences? Mean, and we're used by uh, the Rotary, both the Rotary Clubs in Andover. We're used by the Andover Women in Business. We're used by the Lions Club. 
Uh, we're used by pretty much every, or you know, a lot of the clubs in Andover. We're also used by a lot of the local companies and companies further afield uh, for conferences uh, as well as dinners. And so it's, it's it's in use four or five times a week, I'd imagine. Well, there you have it. There's been some remarkable changes here in the last two years. I can remember when it was a very old fully duddy hotel but it's certainly not that now Simon thanks very much for showing us around it's okay Tony thanks for coming along when you get your gym and all the rest done can we come along and have a look at that yes yeah, certainly you know that will give us the 27 bedrooms and the mini gym hopefully we can have a sauna and solarium and so you'll be more than welcome to come back if I can use the gym I need it you certainly do thanks a lot <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you again <laughs> bye now thanks a lot Tony shopping? Parking in the Old George Mall is an absolute doddle these days. The choice of shops and stores is simply marvellous. With BHS, Marks & Spencer, River Island, Dorothy Perkins, WH Smith, Next, Dixon's, R Price, Mothercare, Boots, Monsoon, Hamels, Jacques Vert and many more. Spring stocks and fashions are arriving daily. So visit the new look Old George Mall Shopping Centre and discover why shopping in Salisbury has never been more enjoyable. Jane Austen was born on the 16th of December 1775 at Steventon Rectory in the county of Hampshire and actually lived part of her life right here in College Street in Winchester. Jane was a very family girl and particularly close to her mother, a busy countrywoman and keen gardener who actually apparently rather liked this, uh, this rather ungenteel position of the family house overlooking the village street. As the history books write, Jane was an especially favourite member of the family, never left short of praise or encouragement. Indeed, it seems by all accounts it was her own immediate and extended family, in addition to some very close family friends, who were responsible for nurturing the writing talent that led to her eventual success as a novelist. During her formative years, Jane Austen was a voracious reader, consuming novels good and bad with a vengeance. In fact, before she was 16, she'd already written her first mimicries of these fellow novelists, some serious, some pretty outrageous, which were transcribed into a series of publications. But of course, she is best known for her six novels, Pride and Prejudice to date being the most famous, and the just about to be released Sense and Sensibility, which no doubt will once again send Jane Austen Austin's work into the heady heights of celluloid sensation. Oh, my aid, no light propitious shone, when snatched from all effectual aid, be perished, perished each alone. But I beneath a rougher sea, and whelmed in deeper gulfs than he. No, Edward, listen. No voice divine the storm allayed, no light propitious shone, when snatched from all effectual aid, we perished each alone. Can you not feel his despair? <sighs> Try again. No voice divine, the storm allayed. Light. No light propitious shone. And snatched from all effectual aid, to perish to each alone. Well, there's Sarah sat in the three and sixes. <laughs> in, in the middle of Winchester, in, in a disused chapel. But we're not in disused chapel. We're in. Um, where are we? In Winchester? In. What's where, the, street? Uh, the name of the street is at, um, Southgate Street. Yeah. And we're in the old uh, Garrison Chapel, which used to be part of the, the um, b um, barracks here. Yep. And if you'd been here five months ago, you'd have seen the most incredible, derelict building with bats and bird droppings, and really? uh, you would be astounded to see what is happening here today. We're with Romain Hart, who's the MD of Mainline Pictures. And they have just purchased this new incredible cinema, haven't you? Well, not exactly as you see it now. No. <laughs> but, uh, it's, what we purchased is a very old chapel yep. that was broken down and uh, badly in need of some love and care. Yep. And that's what we've managed to do it. But you've got, it. You've got several other cinemas as well, haven't yes, you? Yes, we have. We've got five other cinemas. We've yep. got the screen on the hill in Hampstead and the screen on the green and the screen on Baker Street and we've got one in Walton on Thames and one in Rygate in Surrey. What made you come to Winchester? Well, there wasn't a cinema here. We've been trying for six years to bring cinema back. Yeah. That's a very good reason. And also, the audience profile is exactly the kind of audience that we go to. Yeah. But as you say, loads of work 
going on. And on the 23rd of February, you've got your gala night. Are you yes, going to be finished yeah. in time? Uh, absolutely, yes. I'm assured. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no doubt. Yeah. And, and what's happening that night? Well, that night we've got um, Emma Thompson coming and we've got a gala preview of the film Sense and Sensibility, for which Emma has been nominated for two Oscars, one for Best Adapted Screenplay and one for Best Actress. And Kate Winslet, who has also been nominated for a Best Supporting Actress Oscar. So we're very excited. Yeah, we've got a clip of that coming up right now, the scene where Mr Willoughby uh, goes and rescues Marianne from a twisting her ankle, I believe. Oh, yes. That's Mr right. Willoughby is a very delicious Greg Wise, and he'll also be here on the night. Really? Yes. OK, we're just going to run with that, and we'll, we'll see you again in a minute. Are you hurt? Only my ankle. May I have your permission to ascertain if there are any breaks? <sighs> It is not broken. Now, can you put your arm about my neck? Allow me to escort you home. So, Romain, we've looks like we've got a pretty impressive sound system down here in the stage. What's going to be happening up well, here? And there's going to be a screen that actually goes up. So that if we have people on stage, the uh, 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 directors talking when the films are being shown, we have a place for them to be, and they haven't got to stand in front of the uh, in front of the screen. So we have a nice large stage area for any special events that we want to have here. What other special events have you got lined up? Well, uh, um, Southern Arts, we're doing we'll be doing some work with Southern Arts with uh, vi video filmmakers who will be showing their films here, special screenings, um, and anything really that the local people would like, as long as it fits in with our program. Romain, just off camera just now, you were telling me something about train spotting. I'm sorry, we've got to know. The train spotters are coming to town um, in, in March, I think, the date. I'm not sure of the date, actually. But they're coming soon. It's a very remarkable film based on a book of the same name. The director, Danny Boyle, will be here, and he'll be live on the stage to talk about the film. And we're having a stream of programming that will be very good for the university students in the city. So uh, we're very happy that there's 8,500 of them. And so we'll be showing lots of films that hopefully will appeal to them. We're also going to be doing children's programming at least four months of the year. One of the screens will have films specially for children. And there'll be afternoon matinees um, for older people. Wonderful. So you've really got quite a busy schedule ahead of you, haven't you? Oh, we certainly have, <laughs> yes. And uh, really, well, just one more thing, um, Romain, because, you know, Alan wanted me to ask if I could get in the movies, but really, he's got a secret desire. Have you any influence within the people in the movie industry yes. now? This blonde-haired man is just dying to have a starring role. He wants to be an actor, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's trying. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Thanks very much, Romain. <laughs> It's a, it's a twisted ankle. Do not be alarmed, Mama. He's pleasant. I can assure you it's not serious. I took the liberty of feeling the bone and it's perfectly sound. Sir, I cannot even begin to thank you. Please do not think of it. I'm honoured to be of service. Please, will you not be seated? Pray excuse me. I have no desire to leave a watermark. But permit me to call tomorrow afternoon and inquire after the patient. We, sh we shall look forward to it. You're most kind. I'm sure you are. Thank you. Margaret, get the gentleman his hat. Thank you. His name, his name. His name. Please, could you tell us to me? We are so much obliged. John Willoughby of Allen, at your service, Mark. John Willoughby of Allen. What an impressive gentleman. He lifted me as if I weighed no more than a dried leaf. Is he human? <laughs> <laughs> tell me if I hurt you. She feels no pain, Mama. <laughs> Margaret, um, ask Betsy to make up a cold compress, please. Quickly as you can. Oh, please don't say anything important. Go on, go on. Did you see him? He expressed himself well, did he not? With great decorum and honour. And spirit and wit and feeling. And economy. Ten words at most. Well, and he is to come tomorrow. Marianne, you must change. You will catch a cold. What care I for colds when there is such a man? You will care very much when your nose swells up. You are right. Help me, Eleanor. OK, well, we've shimmied across the corridor. We're now in screen two, and I'm with Keith Priest, the architect who's been commissioned to do this amazing feat, really. <laughs> Keith, tell us a little bit about how the project started. 
It started primarily by looking for a building that into which you could fit a cinema. And oddly enough, this is just about the right sort of dimensions for fitting a, a, a cinema. The heights and widths and lengths are just about right without doing much uh, distortion to the fabric. And what were the preparations like? I mean, how long would that take to start converting something like that into what's happening right now? Well, there's a long planning process dealing with statutory authorities and things mm. like that who were incredibly helpful. Uh, that takes about eight to ten weeks. Uh, then there's about eight to ten weeks of preparation of drawings, then you start on site. And what are the restrictions on a grain two building with um, uh, alterations? Every th most aspects of the work have to be approved in detail mm. before you start them. Are you allowed to do anything externally? You're allowed to do things as long as they're approved. Oh, I see, it's like that. <laughs> Whoops, yes, he's being very proper here. So tell me, Keith, how do you tackle the acoustics in a building like this? Well, basically you're dealing with powered sound. The sound gets fired from behind the screen and hits this back wall and you have to stop it bouncing back onto people and confusing them with mixed uh, sound images. Uh, so the, this wall is absorbent and we have to match the absorbency of the natural brickwork there on that wall, which is why you see those absorbent panels there. Right. Uh, it's a fairly simple process. So during this whole process, Keith, have you actually destroyed the essence of this building in any way? The background to the design is that most of the bits that make this a cinema, the sloping floors, the projection room on the level behind us, are removable. They can be taken out and it would leave a perfect, open, restored space. Right. Yeah. So in future years, if technology changes and we don't want a cinema anymore, the building can That's be right. reconverted That's to something right. else. That's right. A bit like a Lego set. Amazing. Well, thanks very much, Keith. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Mr. Willoughby. What a pleasure to see you again. Pleasure is all mine, I can assure you. I trust Miss Marianne has not caught cold. You found out my name. But of course. The neighbourhood is crawling with my spies. <laughs> and since you cannot venture out to nature, nature must be brought to you. Oh, how beautiful. These are not from the hothouse. Ah, I see mine is not the first offering, nor the most elegant. I'm afraid I obtained those from an obliging field. And I've always preferred wildflowers. I suspected as much. So you're going to be a star then, Sarah? I thought I already was, Al. Of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Romaine is anyway. Romaine, look at these wonderful plush seats. How many have you got? Uh, there's uh, 384 of them really? o over two screens, and they come specially from Paris. From Paris? They're especially um, deep, um, um, uh, comfortable. <laughs> um, the, what also I'd like to tell you about is the fact how the building has been restored. What we've kept is the original walls have been retained, um, and also the original oak beams. This is all from the original chapel. Yeah. So the architects, Fletcher Priest, have, have, have kept yeah. the whole thing in keeping. And there's a projection room up there. There's the a back. projection room yeah. up there. There's a projection room up there. Up to your left, Jason. There's a projection room. So that's I, I amazing. Think it, yeah. It's it's you know it, it's a it's a wonderful restoration of an old building. Did you say this was a Grade One listed building? A grade Two. Oh, Grade Two. Grade Two listed building. Yes. So I must say it's wonderful to bring it back to life. What would the ticket prices be? I suppose that's ticket of interest price, to the public. Well, um, they're four pounds fifty for the evening performances, and less three pounds and two pounds fifty for children and old age pensioners. And there'll be special prices, special cheap days, and yes. uh, special matinee prices that are cheaper. But the main price for well, the evening main performance is four pound fifty. Well, that's a bargain, really, isn't it? I mean, you've got a licensed bar as well. Licensed bar, yes. Coca-Cola, oh. popcorn, <laughs> chockies, everything, <laughs> yes. So, so how long has um, Mainline Pictures been going now and the other cinemas? Um, Mainline Pictures in its present form from the, the original uh, screen cinema, uh, we opened in Islington in 1970, but my family have been in the cinema business for three generations, so I'm the third generation. And um, so it really goes back to the 20s when we had small cinemas all over London. Well, it's fantastic. I just wish you a great success. It's a Thank wonderful, you very much. wonderful achievement to put all this together. I hope you're going to be ready in time for the 23rd. Well, I'm sure we will. I'm sure you will. Annika, isn't Challenge it? Challenge Annika. <laughs> we might have to bring Annika in, but yes. no, I'm sure it'll be all right. Thank you, Romain. And thanks for watching. Come over and see the cinema. Well, from the building site at the uh, screen at Winchester, sorry for all the mayhem and rubble, but uh, we've been assured they will be open for the Grand Gala premiere on the 23rd of February 
Emma Thompson's going to be here, Greg Wise is going to be here, the cast of Sense and Sensibility are going to be here, and Tyrant TV are going to be there too with our brand new MG convertible. So that should be fun. So join us on Tyrant TV on the 23rd of February at the screen here in Winchester. Hello, I'm Eddie Nags, the Lex Vauxhall dealer principal in Salisbury. Thinking of buying a car in 1996? Come and see us at Southampton Road. Or, for any of your further motoring requirements, go to our service department in Brunel Road, Churchill's Industrial Estate. Camelot Coaches, from the latest and fully air-conditioned luxury coaches to chauffeur-driven limousines and saloon cars. There's only one company you need to call. So for all your travel needs, call Camelot Coaches on Andover 355 379 or fax 345 689. With Camelot Coaches, you're going places. Hello, I'm Ben Wilson from your local newspaper, The Andover Advertiser. Andover is preparing to choose a new Carnival Princess for 1996. The first stage of the competition, which carries a cash prize of £50 for the winner and £25 for each of her attendants, was scheduled for this week with photographs of all the contestants being held at Waverley Hall Studios. Full details of the competition and how to enter appear in the Andover Midweek Advertiser on Tuesday 20th of February. Four Andover supermarkets have to join forces and set up an Andover trolley patrol to round up wayward shopping carts. Tesco, Waitrose, Robert Gregg and Marks and Spencers are to take an area each to scour for discarded trolleys. We are going to blitz the town, said Julie Perrin from Tesco. The bones of a young child were uncovered on Wednesday lunchtime at the start of building work on East Street Corner. Archaeologists say the remains could be anything from pre-Roman to 19th century. The child was believed to be between six and eight when buried. A routine trip to the bottle bank landed Corrine Crutchley behind bars when locked the wrong side of gates at Shepherd Spring Recycling Centre. Her cold 40-minute vigil ended happily when she was set free by a member of staff. It all had a happy ending when centre manager Ron Sallows presented her with a bouquet of flowers on Valentine's Day. A wild-turned couple cheated death when they came within inches of an RA blast which shook London's South Quay last Friday, killing two men. Derek and Anne Hine manoeuvred around the bomb-carrying truck in their transit van just minutes before the blast. You wake up in the middle of the night still thinking about it, said Anne. A quick decision to turn back after a door opened, plus an unfamiliar control layout, seemed to be the main reasons behind the Fifield air crash in August. The recent air accident investigation said all the four occupants died before the fire caught hold. The plane was carrying two couples on a weekend trip to France. One and Andover gentleman showed romance is not dead by wooing his woman with a romantic candlelit dinner right outside her workplace in the Chantry Centre. John Page's crowd-pleasing stunt topped last year's effort when he paraded outside with a bouquet of flowers and banner proclaiming he was not leaving until she came out to give him a kiss. It shows the youngsters how, it, how to do it, said John. And finally, on a personal note, I'd like to thank all the Town TV viewers who sent me Valentine's cards. I'm always open to offers. All these stories and more will appear in this week's Andover Advertiser. I'm Ben Wilson reporting. Well, we're down in deepest Romsey and I'm at the Romsey School with Headmaster. Dr. Richard Skinner. Hello, Richard. Good morning. And now, in 1995, June of last year, you put forward to your governors um, a plan for the extension of this library wing, did you not? Indeed. Tell us a little bit about how it started. Mm -hmm. Well, I was concerned that for a school of this size, where are a thousand pupils, um, 
that the, the library simply wasn't large enough, not only for our own purposes at the moment, but we've also got to look at future developments into the next century and what are going to be the requirements, uh, the educational requirements um, by schools for their pupils. And this library simply wasn't good enough. Before we go on, what actually do you need that you haven't got at the moment? Size. Size to be able to put in um, not only more bookshelves as we require them at the moment, um, but also the developments, microfilm, um, computer terminals, that uh, just simply the space for those yes. in the future. Right. So, of course, then the plan goes forward and then you have to find the cash. Mm -hmm. So there's been quite a lot going on with that. And you were telling us it's been sort of segregated. Tell us a bit how it broke down. Well, under local management uh, procedures, we get a sum of money every year um, for what we call capital building. That's the uh, general improvements around the school. Mm -hmm. Well, we were able to save some of that money or put some of that money into this project. That's £70,000. Right. We also received a sum of money from our parents' association, £10,000, and £10,000 from our own... Tr a charitable trust fund. So we're up to 90 and how much right. do you need? We need 110. Mm -hmm. So I went to the, I thought it would be a good idea, the pupils use the library, that we would generate the final 20,000 using the pupils at the centre of this. Right. And I've said to everybody that they could have a non-uniform day, which is uh, the coming Friday. Bit of an incentive. Mm, look out, <laughs> Romsey, on a non-uniform day. Uh, they could have the non-uniform day and ask them to uh, generate the, the income mm -hmm. um, from any form of sponsorship, individual or corporate. Mm -hmm. So this is going ahead this Friday and well I understand we've actually got a young pupil waiting in the wings to talk to in a moment but he's got some money already so they're getting the money cash oh, in yes. advance are they? Yes. <laughs> there have been a variety of um, ways in which the money has been eased from the, <laughs> uh, from the adults. Um, <laughs> Uh, and there are various schemes going on around the school, most of which I know about. I mm -hmm. think there are one or two that I don't. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that uh, some of the pupils have been writing to companies, um, and hence our young man that, uh, today um, has been inventive enough to say he wanted to be on television, and can he have, a, can he have sponsorship for it as well? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And here we are with Daryl Short, the young man who ingeniously thought of writing to Comptel and asking for a load of money, something we should all learn to do. What did you do? Tell us a little bit about the letter, Daryl. I wrote to Comptel to ask for a donation towards our new library mm -hmm. or something we could raffle. And what did they suggest? Did they ask? Did they give you something to raffle, or did they just write a check for you? They wrote a check to us for mm -hmm. two hundred pounds. Did they? Well, I tell you what, we'll have to start writing a few more letters, won't we? And right beside you, no sooner said than done, is the man with the money, Mr. Gary Shaw from Comptel itself. Perhaps you'd like to present the check, Gary? Certainly. Yes. Well, I think it was a great initiative from Daryl, and Comptel like to support the community, and we think it's a great initiative. So please accept this check for two hundred pounds. Thank you very much. With our thanks. Thank you very much indeed. Well done, Daryl. Thank you. This is Daryl Short reporting from Romsey School. And it's back to the studio. I'm Vicky Woodhall. Welcome to the Salisbury Journal News Review. Three housewives and a builder are among a group of white parish villagers who are proof that you don't have to be a city slicker to come up trumps on the stock exchange. The 18 members of the White Parish Share Club are now celebrating becoming the most successful investment club of the year, beating the Financial Times 100 share index hands down. The club made nearly 50% profit on its £5,000 stake last year. It all began after an advert in the local church newspaper and now they're having to turn would-be members away. Not all their £1,500 prize money will go on investments. The group believes in fun with its finance and is going to splash out £500 on a slap-up meal. Up to 60 new jobs will be created in April when Salisbury's County Hotel in Bridge Street reopens after a refit. The hotel is being transformed into a triple attraction with an alehouse, a bar and a 31-bed hotel. Council tax bills in Salisbury District are set for an average rise of 8% this year. The District Council is expected to approve a figure of £590 for Band D properties. Disabled shoppers have been promised a friendlier welcome in Salisbury before the end of the year. The District Council has approved a shop mobility scheme, which should be up and running by Christmas. 
For a nominal fee, disabled people will be able to leave their cars in the central car park and transfer to a wheelchair or scooter for quicker and easier access to the shops. Council tenants waiting for repairs to their homes could wait up to seven years, a Salisbury Labour councillor has warned. Councillor Paul Clegg was one of several Labour members who tried to convince the District Council to double the sum it wanted to borrow for repairs. He said £1 million was needed to get the Council House maintenance programme back on track. In turning down the £1 million cash loan in favour of half a million, Council Lib Dem leader John Hayward said his party wasn't going back on election promises. He said it was still trying to reduce the £13.5 million housing debt inherited from the previous Tory administration. An inquest into the death of a 54-year-old Amesbury woman has had to be adjourned because of family concerns over her treatment at Salisbury District Hospital. Maida Kilford of Queensbury Road was taken to hospital last September after an overdose of antidepressants. Her family want to know why they were informed she was responding well to treatment, only to be told the next day that she had died. The doctor who treated Mrs Kilford will be called to give evidence at the hearing in Salisbury. A retired teacher from God's Hill helped lead a party of blind skiers to safety just minutes before a massive avalanche engulfed a ski resort in the Pyrenees. 59-year-old Bridget Marriott was one of a party of sighted people looking after 10 blind and visually impaired people on a skiing holiday in Andorra. Police are treating as arson a fire in an outhouse in Kyval Court in Salisbury. A mattress was set alight inside the building. A Salisbury policeman escaped serious injury when a hit-and-run driver knocked him down at a police roadblock on Wilton Road. A court heard how PC Michael Parrott suffered only a bloody nose and bruising when 25-year-old Jonathan Powell drove around the vehicle police were using to block the road. Powell had led the police on a car chase through Salisbury, crashing into a bollard and driving the entire length of pedestrianised Fish Row. He was finally caught at Skew Bridge, where his battered Fiesta came to a halt. Powell, who was already banned from driving, admitted causing actual bodily harm, failing to stop after an accident, as well as other motoring offences, handling a stolen driver's licence and visa card. The case was adjourned for reports. Two men charged with murdering Salisbury teenager Edward Harkins at the city's fun fair last October are to stand trial in March. 24-year-old Justin Rainey of Glyndebourne Close Salisbury and Timothy Kerwin, aged 23, formerly of Elm Grove Road Salisbury, will appear at Winchester Crown Court on March the 6th. And finally, former ballerina Margaret Cruz from Fovent will relive her dancing heyday oh, yes. when she treads the boards at London's Royal Opera House in front yes. of the Queen. It will be 50 years to the day that 68-year-old Mrs. Cruz took to the same stage as a soloist in Sleeping Beauty. She is one of the original cast invited on stage between acts at the Royal Opera House's 50th anniversary gala performance of the ballet. I'm Vicky Woodhall. Thanks for watching the Salisbury Journal News Review. Well, hello, viewers. As I promised you last week, uh, we're going to be doing a road test on the Peugeot 406. And up against us um, in, the, in this class, the contenders are the Citroën Xantia, the Ford Mondeo, the Vauxhall Vectra, and the Renault Laguna. And we're in the Por Peugeot 406. And we're going to take it for a little spin to see how it performs. Lovely leather seats. And the first thing I noticed when I actually started it was you have to pull something down and punch in a code so you can actually start the car. But anyway, we're off up the Wayhill Road in Andover heading towards Salisbury, so we'll see you on the open road. Thanks for watching Town TV Road Test. Bye for now. Well, we're driving the uh, two-litre executive version of the 406. And I must say my first impressions are very favourable. It's uh, much smoother than the old 405. And uh, very well designed and very quick. This one is um, well, just coming up to the 70 mile an hour limit. It's got digital readouts here for mileage and uh, fully equipped radio stereo, very smooth and it handles very well. It's a lovely ride, it's uh, very smooth on the road. Let's say we're on the A303 heading towards Salisbury. So, uh, 
the moment to keep our speed down. We don't want to get booked on the Town TV road test, so we better take it a bit easy. But, uh, as I say, first impressions, really nice car, lovely leather seats. And we'll just continue down here a bit. And we'll come back on the, uh, the old A303, to any of the viewers are watching you know that. We got Steve, the cameraman, on board. I don't know whether he thinks it's very smooth or not. It seems to be very smooth, Steve, doesn't it? Yeah, Steve gives a nod of encouragement. Right, well, we've put off the A303, and as I say, the handling is very good indeed, and the ride's very good. Very positive steering. We're just going to check it around the villages to see uh, how it handles through here. We'll just make a little left-hand turn. Very good power steering. It's quite quiet. Steve said there was a bit of wind noise, but we're going to have to check up on that. But anyway, it's where in the house it is now. I've got the diesel, and this is much quieter than the, than the diesel. As I say, it's a very comfortable car to drive. And uh, just from my experience coming down the A303, I think it's an uh, ideal car for long distances. And um, it just feels, feels and handles well. I think it's obviously uh, gained a lot of experience with the 405, but the 406 now is uh, a beautiful car to drive. We're going to be driving a Ford Mondeo next week to have a, have a look at that one. But uh, I must say I'm very impressed. I'm not a hard man to please, so uh, it's very, very good. I'd like to have a go in the diesel version and the diesel estate version, but this is very good indeed. And it handles equally as well, as I say, on the country lanes or on the fast dual carriageway. So. Sit back and enjoy the ride. So there we have it, the new Peugeot 406. Really nice car. I think I, I, I've got something to say really about the equipment. It's 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 well well fitted out. It's, it's very very good value for money. I just like to say something about the safety and security aspect of the Peugeot 406. It's got airbags, driver and passenger airbags. It's got seat belt pretensioners. It's got three point central rear belts, anti lock brakes, and deadlocks, and an immobilizer. So all in all, it's uh, good value for money and. Uh, you're going to be safe. Hopefully it won't be stolen. So there we go. Anyway, we'll be bringing you a report on the Ford Mondeo next week and uh, the Suzuki Jeep. So keep watching Town TV Road Tests. Bye for now. Do you have a problem with damp and condensation? You may not be aware that the problems are caused by everyday living. Cooking, taking a bath or shower, drying your hair and even breathing. How is the problem solved? The Mega Dry Dehumidifier, a condensation collecting machine. It attracts the moisture throughout your home and holds it in a container so you can pour your condensation problems down the drain. Did you know that without proper insulation you could be losing 35% of your heating through your walls and 25% through your loft? 
If you'd like to know how to save 25% on your heating bills, phone the specialists. Anna Valley Insulations on 01264 350171 or you can fax them on 01264 333 915. <laughs> I thought you were going to sing something to me. Du, 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 du. What a voice. What a golden voice. You'll know more about that later. Yes. Anyway, welcome back to Town TV's Immaculate Studios. Jason's working away. Steve's working away. Mm, and we're just standing here. Chrissy's doing all the research, and we'll tell you about that later, too. What's this? Dennis Taylor. Mm -hmm. Proud I'm visit. Himself. The old George Mel on Monday, the 19th of February. If you're watching after that, you'll have missed him. But um, it's all to do with our prize winners, isn't it? Yeah, good prize as well, isn't it? Dennis is going to go along and present a snooker cue. Yeah, plus two uh, sweaters. Plus two sweaters from the sweater shop in the old George Mel. So what we're going to do is uh, draw this prize from the golden bucket. You've all been waiting for this. But first, we're going to tell you the answers. We had another 100 people ring in with the correct answers. We had some wrong ones, but uh, the correct answers were, of course, what do you do at a bus stop and you... Q. Q. And what do you write on a blackboard with? Bit of chalk. Bit of chalk. See, these are all snooker items. And what was Mr. Higgins's first name or Christian name? So we had... Or a nickname. Or nickname, yeah. Alex, of course, Hurricane. Yep. Higgins. So uh, those were the correct answers. And I say we had about 100 people with the correct ones. So well done all you viewers out there for ringing in. And well done to North Battlesley. Big mention for them down near Southampton. We're on cable now. Yeah, it must have just only happened recently down there. Didn't yeah, it? thanks yeah. for ringing in all you guys down there. And uh, thanks to Romsey, thanks to Durrington, thanks to Amesbury, Lugershaw, Salisbury, and of course Andover. So there we go. Right. We can draw it. this. I suppose we better draw it. Better draw go on, then I'll do it this week then. Who's going to win this wonderful prize? And you've got to be, actually, you've got to be in Salisbury on. Yeah, if you can Monday. make it, if you can get there at about quarter to. Quarter to twelve. Twelve on yeah. Monday. Um, uh, on Monday the nineteenth. I say, if you're watching this after that, uh, you've missed out. But uh, anyway, here it comes. Do you want to open it up and see who it is? Right. Can you? Can we read this? Charlie Jackson. Charlie Jackson. They are good old Charlie. Charlie rings in every week for the quiz. Yes. So Charlie Jackson, you won the prize this week. So well done. And also with Charlie, thanks for his comments on the show. Yeah, he we was put some nice that. comments on the uh, show, Charlie. So well done. Uh, that's great. We'll give you a buzz. Thank you very much. So. That was a great, uh, great prize. And anyway, we've got a, another competition coming up for you, which is, what have we got this week? Oh, we've got a meal for two at the White's Heart Hotel in Andover. You've probably seen that earlier in the show. That was yeah. really good. Plus a bottle of wine. Plus, and this is for adults only, <clears throat> yeah. you've got two tickets to see Mike Reed on Saturday, 16th of March at the wonderful Anvil Theatre in Basingstoke. And you may get to meet him. You may go and talk to him, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, we're hoping to get to have a, a chat with him. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think you so did. So there we go. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Meal for two at the White Heart in Andover, plus a bottle of wine, plus two tickets to see Mike Reed on Saturday, the 16th of March, in Basingstoke at the Anvil Theatre. We'll let you know all about that. And you may, as I say, maybe film backstage with Mike Reed. Right. Questions. Questions. It's all about soaps this week. And... Uh, so obviously, what's the first one? What soap is Mike in? What <laughs> soap? <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> I thought it was Coronation Street. No, 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 it wasn't. No, 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 it wasn't that one. So, what soap is Mike Reed in? Of course, our viewers won't be will know that because they're too busy watching town TV. Of course, you are. <laughs> no, Steve said neighbours. Steve said neighbours, but no, Emma, no, it wasn't Emma. No, anyway. No. anyway, question two: What is the name of the Cockney actress who joined the same show not so long ago? She used to be in the Carry On films. Mm -hmm. I interviewed her actually over at Basingstoke. Did you? Oh, she's a lovely. Oh, lady. of course she did. She did pantomime. Yeah, oh, she's a lovely lady. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the second. One. What is the name of the Cockney actress who joined the same show not so long ago? She used to be in Carry On films. And three, Joan Collins has been in the news this week. And uh, so, what American soap did she star in? Was it Dallas, L.A. Law, or Dynasty, or Dynasty, if you want to pronounce it? Mm. That? So that's it. Joan Collins has been in the news this week. What American soap did she star in? What do you think, then, Steve? He's going to say Knott's Landing or something. Yeah. That's not in it, no. Was it Dallas, 
<laughs> LA Law or Dynasty. <laughs> I knew you'd make a comment about that. Mm. So ring us on 390. 390. Or Salisbury 555. 222. Or fax us on 390. 391. Or send a letter or anything to P.O. Box 555 in Andover. Hmm. <sighs> That's nearly about it. There's though, wonderful it? prizes. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> what did you just like? <laughs> That's just coming up, Steve. We're oh, getting nice. a big cue here from Steve behind the camera. He's been working hard this week. Yeah. Ever since he got his new haircut, he hasn't stopped. I know. He does oh. look younger, though, doesn't he? All the comments on that. Yeah. Three guys, three guys from New Street Football Club stopped me last night. Hi, guys. And they said, uh, we've got a big charity event coming up to match, match Steve's haircutting saga. Oh, really? Apparently somebody's going to get their hair shaved off completely, plus their beard. Oh, so uh, we're going to bring you some news on that work last week. Uh, next week, rather. I think Steve so, got away like it, really, when you think about it. <laughs> I think he got... He looks quite smart, doesn't he? He does. He's worrying me now. I know. So, anyway, more on this charity haircutting nonsense next week. And thank you, guys, from New Street. Right. Uh, Jason, can we have a quick blast of Handel's uh, Messiah? Hang on. Here it comes right now. Yeah. Why did I do that? I'll tell you why I did that. Because chrissy has been doing some research. Yeah. An exciting story, this. A really it? exciting story. We found out that Handel had been corresponding, Handel, the composer, had been corresponding with somebody in a Cathedral Close in Salisbury, and they've just unearthed all these letters at the Hampshire mm. County Council. Some great detective work's been going on, and we're going to bring you that story next week because it's really interesting. And on the Graphic Channel this week, just to show that uh, we're quite arty, in, arty on town TV, aren't we, really? Sometimes. Quite cultural. Yeah. Quite cultural. We're going to have... Um, Except some Handel's Messiah. How about that? Oh, excellent. Not a dire straits. So we're going to have a bit of the Messiah. Mm, just That's coming up over the Graphics Channel. Don't forget to ring us on 390390. Mm -hmm. And you can go on the Graphics Channel for, well, birthday greetings are free. Yeah, of course they are. And it's, it doesn't cost very, little, very much for a trade or anything else. No, so ring and us. And don't forget it's on after the show. And it goes on for quite a long time after the show. So when we finish gabbling away, just watch it. It's coming up yeah. right now. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you.